Okay, I'm let I'm waiting for Arhan. Let's wait for him to join. Okay. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, you read the paragraph which I have written here. Yes, sir. Uh, what is a a periscope? A periscope is an instrument that is used to look at objects that are not in the line of sight of the observer. In the uh, in other words, it is used to see objects that are hidden. The pace uh, the periscope works on the phenomena of multiple reflections of light. Inside the periscope, there are two mirrors that are inclined at an angle of 45. Uh, the periscopes are generally used in submarines, tanks, and bunkers by the soldiers. Hmm. Okay. Now, this periscope is being used generally in submarines, tanks, and bunkers, and soldiers. Okay. Yes, so, if you were to see the structure of submarines, this is mounted on top of the submarine here this actually here is a periscope here yes sir. all right so you see since so, submarines they um they do not float at the they do not uh, like uh, are at the surface of the water they are deep beneath the water level beneath yes. the water surfaces getting it now so that's yes. why in order for the purpose of navigation they have got this periscopes Okay, now how this works? In this, you have got two mirrors that are inclined at an angle of 45 degree. Now look at the two mirrors here. These two mirrors. This mirror here and this one here. Okay, these two are inclined at an angle of 45, 45. degree. At an inclination of 45 degree, they are placed here. Such that when light enters, when light falls on this mirror, it gets reflected back. And then for the second time, the image will be getting reflected back from the mirror number two here. Okay. Hmm. And from the mirror number two, light exits. All right. Yeah. Light exits. And then you get the image of whatever the object is around the somebody. Yes. Walling with Salaam, Arhan. So, Arhan, we have just started our discussion regarding the periscopes. Okay, so periscopes of the hook, these are structures like this that are mounted on top of the submarine generally. Okay, and this is used to use for the purpose of navigation and to look out for the nearby objects, right? Yeah. Okay, so you see the people who are sitting under the submarine cannot directly come, uh, come to the surface, okay, and look at the nearby objects since it could be dangerous. Yes. That's why they have devised this very genius instrument that is periscope so here what was happening that light uh, here you have got this structure pipe like a structure where two mirrors are fit mirror number one and mirror number two are fit here at an angle of 45 degree okay this is making an angle of 45 degree with the pipe here such that when light enters on the first mirror it reflects the light and then the reflected rays falls on the mirror number two and then here whatever image is formed you can get it on a surface. Yes, sir. All so right. So this is how periscopes are work. Or uh, some other type of mirrors. They are plane mirrors. Plane mirrors are used. Okay. Okay. Normal plane mirrors that we have. Here you can see the image. Then you have got the uh, got kaleidoscopes. Here also multiple reflection occurs. Multiple of reflection is not simply this. Reflection that is more than one time. Hmm? Yes. If you were to remember, multiple reflections were seen in other objects also. Hmm. Okay. If you were to see here, hmm. mm, I think we discussed it earlier as well, no? Yes, so here. No, way, not yeah, in this one. Here we talked about refraction and reflection. Okay. Yes, anyway, so here uh, reflection is happening more than once. That's why. The concept of multiple reflection will be used here. Then next instrument you have got is a kaleidoscope. This device also works on the phenomena of multiple reflections. And in, interestingly here you will be using more than two mirrors. Okay, so yeah. you can make it yourself also. Simply take a piece of uh, cardboard. Okay, mm -hmm. take a three pieces of uh, cardboard like this. Okay, join them together and get a prism like a structure and inside the cardboard place three mirrors, plane mirrors. Hmm. Hmm. 
or either you can take a cylindrical structure also okay mm -hmm. or you can put this prism like cardboard structure inside the cylindrical pipe like a structure yeah so anyways that is about the structure let's first discuss the concept the concept says that it's a device that works on the phenomena of multiple reflections with the help of multiple mirrors it has a cylindrical structure with three plane mirrors inside it so in kaleidoscope mm -hmm. three plane mirrors are used and it contains several pieces of beads mm -hmm. broken glasses or colorful bangles pebbles etc okay so what is Now, it used for it is used for obtaining interesting patterns of colors in the next slide you will see see here this kid is looking via looking through this kaleidoscope uh, here so what actually happens when the light falls upon these objects look here the structure is like this yeah from this side you will be viewing this okay while on the other side you would have placed so many different structures so many different colorful beads okay or just take colorful pieces pieces of broken bangles of broken bangles just take them and uh, stick those uh, broken pieces of colorful bangles on a piece of circular paper and attach that circular paper at the other end of this kaleidoscope that is here okay yes, so here this kid has got different colorful patterns okay of beads and she is looking it from it so what will happen from this viewing side light will be falling inside light will fall inside it getting it now so where what will happen you have placed three mirrors inside it actually and the light will be getting reflected from pieces from different colorful pieces it could be of bangle it could be pebbles it could be anything okay so multiple yes. reflection will happen now okay yes, uh, multiple reflections will be happening from the surface of the plane mirrors here getting it now that's why you will be obtaining very interesting patterns like here in the image you can see hmm? yeah right so simply that is uh, what is a uh, that is like a playing tool that is called a kaleidoscope all right so here yeah. you can see that this results in the formation of very beautiful and colorful patterns all right hmm. now every time you will see that you will be getting different patterns the pattern might not be same sometimes the pattern might be like this the sometimes the pattern might be like this the hmm. pattern will change okay why is it so because the reflection of light is not always the same hmm? yeah okay the reflection of the light is not same in every case hence you get different pattern so it okay. shows different patterns exactly it shows different patterns depending upon the angle at which the rays are reflecting from the mirror suppose light rays enters from this side so it will hit this side first then again it will hit this plane mirror then this plane mirror then this then finally this okay yeah so at no two times the uh, pattern are is going to be same the patterns are different right now okay yes. so that was basically about like a uh, light okay reflection of light right mm -hmm. now and some of the phenomena like how light disperses like how you get rainbows etc yes sir now you have got the human eye let's discuss about the human eye all right yeah so human eye you see uh, <coughs> it's a spherical shape organ almost the diameter is about 2.3 cm hmm. interestingly the size of the human eye remains almost same throughout the age so whether if you were to look at the eyes of a child or whether you were to look at the eyes of a old person the size almost remains same okay yeah. so eyes you see these are na sensory organs na yes sir these are the sensory organs that allows us to see things which are present in the environment hmm all right and what basically happens the eye absorbs the light rays hmm? yes sir talking about its function the structure and working of the human eye 
the first thing is that eyes are sensory organ okay that allows us to see things present in the surrounding hmm. next is how it works it absorbs the light rays okay yeah. it absorbs the light rays those light rays could be reflected light rays or it could be directly from the source okay hmm. so it absorbs the light rays and forms the image now you guys tell me the image that is being formed by the eye will it be uh, virtual or will it be real image so real image real rays. yeah no no it's not a re real image real images can be obtained on a screen if you guys were to remember the light rays that comes from a projector machine yes sir. Huh? you can obtain it on a piece of, on a on a piece of cloth or, or on a white board or on yes. a, any or, or on any wall so that was called as a real image no yeah okay now the image that is being formed like look at you the surroundings hmm. so many different things are in your environment in your surrounding can you draw them on i mean to say can you uh, take that image on a screen huh no sir no it's no sir all right so you see that it absorbs the light rays and forms virtual images just like how the image form in a plane mirror is a virtual image similar to that the image formed by our light uh, by our eyes are virtual images right yeah no it will form a uh, it will form a visual image and then it will transform uh, this uh, information to the brain so what happens this retina that you see here this retina here okay this is actually the spot where formation of light takes place yeah. so what basically happens suppose you are seeing a candle here suppose you are seeing a candle here so the rays coming from the candles enters your enters your eyes basically and since you have got a lens like a structure in your eye also so lens converges light no yes sir it converges the light so it will converge for example here and image will be formed here and interestingly it, a reverse image is formed okay mm. inverted image is formed but the brain will interpret it as what it will interpret oh. it as upright upright yes sir erect. upright erect image all right so yes. this is basically the retina when we will come to the structure and parts of the eye we will discuss that in detail so retina is the place where the formation of image takes place or we can say where the rays coming from the objects converges right yes sir all right so it absorbs the light rays and forms virtual images and transform um <coughs> this information formation of the image to the brain to our brain getting it now yes sir okay no here you see our eyes have got a very uh, got a uh, got a almost spherical shape structure okay and each eye is like you can call it as eyeballs right yes sir okay and where is this eyeball attached it is attached in the eye socket in our faces right yes, now sir. okay like our face okay these are the eye sockets where the eyeballs are attached right here yes sir Yes. Now the eyeballs, uh, you see, uh, they are connect. Uh, they are attached to this eye socket via eye muscles, right? Eye nerves, nerves. Nerves are there, but you see, any organ is attached to the bones by the muscles, not by the nerves. Nerves, their function is to uh, bring in blood and carry the messages, right? Now. Yeah. So you, these, uh, there are muscles that. That connects the eyeball to the eye socket, and also you see the muscles will allow the movement of the eyeballs, 
right okay yes. so the movement of the eyeballs it is due to the presence of muscles there muscles. and you will see our eyes are protected by eyelids also yeah. we are still talking about the structure so first thing first that eyeballs attached to eye socket why are uh i uh, i muscles i muscles hmm with the help of i muscles okay then you see uh like our eyes are protected with the eyelids so the function of eyelid is to protect our eyes from unwanted substances so it could be dirt dust or it could be excess of light right if yes. there is a very bright light eyelids will close down the incoming light it will uh, it will uh, <clears throat> shut down and will not allow the excess light to enter the eye yes sir okay so eyes are protected by eyelids okay now are we able to control the movement of eyelids hmm? the movement of the eyelids is it a voluntary action or is it a involuntary action so so voluntary so, voluntary okay for a temporary time it's voluntary hmm? but while you uh, but if but if you were we try to stop the movement of the eyelids we can stop it yeah. yeah but the thing is normally when you blink you do not observe it no yes sir okay you not think of it when you are blinking so eyes are protected with the eyelids and this eyelids protects from dust slash excessive light all right so this was about the structure and <laughs> working of the human light a uh, human eye okay yes the next thing any confusion so far please do let no, me sir. know No, sir. Okay. The next thing we are going to know about is the um, parts of the human eye. What are the different parts of the human eye that we have got? All sir, right. Sir, we have given all all these uh, names. You, ha it's better if you were to remember. I'm I'm highlighting the names which are important. Okay. Yeah. This cornea is important. Pupil is important. Iris is important. Okay. Yes. Then ce ciliary muscle is important. Okay. Yeah. All right. Then you have got this uh, vitreous humor, and then here in this you have got aqueous humor. Let me write it over. It's not given here. Aqueous humor. Okay, and this this is the vitreous humor or vitreous chamber. So. Yes, the ones which i highlighted using the red color these are the importance which you should be remembering retina optic nerve and the blind spot sir we are are we going to study the all the functions you yes we will be studying about the functions of each of these parts one two let me write them down three four five six seven and eight okay it's not very lengthy these are very simple so okay that yeah. will, these are very easy right now you see let's let's start with the first that is cornea here hmm. now yeah. cornea is what it is now like a transparent covering which is present on the outermost side of the eyes hmm. yes this cornea this blue thick line which you are seeing here that is actually cornea it looks very thin but it is actually uh, itself made up of Uh, six layers. Hmm? Yeah. Okay, and the tears that come out from the tear gland, it actually fills up the cornea. Oh, yeah. Okay, it comes, it fills up the cornea from inside or outside, from outside, from outside. So let's outside. say these are the these are the tear uh, tears. Okay, yeah. and in doing so. the tear glands are actually protecting our eyes so if there is any unwanted particles any insects okay or if any dirts so that will get dissolved with the tear and that will be getting released from the eyes yes sir so that is the function of the cornea yeah right now now 
so let me list them list them down so you have got cornea i will be asking you guys for uh, once i have completed all the parts i will be asking the functions of each of the parts okay so oh, i'm not sir. not writing it down here cornea then you have got iris look at the diagram here now iris here you can see there are two iris here hmm? one here actually this 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 much of region which you are seeing here no hmm? yeah this this much of region this black here and this yes. black here okay these are very dark color mus muscles actually hmm? these are dark color muscular structure which are present in the center of this cornea yeah hmm? now normally like if i were to draw the human eyes let's say this here hmm. now the human eye looks like this right now somewhat yes. like this yeah yeah so this dark thing this dark lines which i have drawn here it is what it is nothing but iris cornea no iris here yeah ye kya iris hai okay and the cornea which you just said here this is what <coughs> the whole thing is cornea this the whole thing is cornea here okay yeah so many many times the people when they go through the cataract what is actually removed sir yes. some layer about the cornea over the iris over the iris exactly iris is behind the cornea iris yeah. cornea ke piche hai okay so above the iris you have got cornea all right now yeah. okay then so we are talking about we uh, just to be clear one more thing i need to clear here like uh, this white region that you see here na this white region hmm? yes, don't get confused it with cornea ye cornea nahi hai that white region which you are seeing here that is not cornea see this hmm. sclera here as c l e r a yeah that white region is called as sclera yeah okay is that clear to you both of yes, you sir. okay let's move ahead then so back to uh, iris so here you can see <laughs> this hair like structures or like the dark uh, very dark muscle uh, muscles like structure they are actually iris okay yeah. and after iris i will be coming back to iris but after that you see you have got pupil so yes, in the center in the center of the eyes you have got a very dense like structure like this black hair hmm Yeah. that is actually the pupil pupil that is what pupil now can you guys uh, 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 tell me that many a times what happens now if bright if bright lights were to fall over our eyes what happens what do you see so the does the so the pupil automatically closes exactly pupil not pupil closes and iris Our becomes eyes. more it, iris widens iris yeah. widens so this is the normal eye let's say this is a normal eye here okay and the iris will be like this okay in normal light this is our eyes in normal light and if the if there is a bright light what will happen the iris will, will close uh, widen exactly iris will widen because in widening it will be limiting the incoming light yeah right now okay now you see after iris you have got a small small opening that we call yeah. as pupil that we call as pupil, pupil. okay now it is actually this pupil through which the light is entering notice the yes. notice where i am pointing here yes sir through this much area only light enters our eyes so if we were like if the, if the light is very dim what will happen the size of the pupil will increase right yes, and the size yes. of the iris will decrease 
now if yes. you if we were to expose to brighter lights then what will happen the size of the people will reduce and the size of the iris increase. will increase getting it now yes sir okay now now the reason why so some people have got like uh, blue eyes some people have got black some people have got green in and some people have got brown eyes also why because <laughs> this iris now it has got colorful pigments it has yes, got sir. colorful pigments the colorful pigments could be of like a gray uh, green brown right now yeah okay so let's summarize iris so far humne kya kya baatein ki iris it's a dark color muscular tissue present behind the cornea cornea right now okay yes, and also if you were to see Mm, um, it has got a small opening also that is called as pupil, hmm. right? Yes. Uh, it yes. also iris the muscles of the iris actually it controls the amount of light that can enter our eyes. Yeah. Okay. So that's it about iris. Now after iris we have got a lens like a structure here. Our eyes also have got its own natural lens. Hmm. Yes. Sir. So it is like a sphere of liquid. present inside the eye hmm? yeah getting so eye lines is located behind where it is located just behind pupil yes sir okay and uh, it is located just behind the pupil and it will actually help in the formation of an image the eye because yeah. lenses helps to convert the rays yes, so whatever so rays are coming why the pupil it will be converging here yeah? what is the uh, function of pupil pupil is simply a opening by which light is entering your eye okay 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 it's simply a opening okay yeah. all right so that is it about lens here the only function of the lens is to help to convert the light rays okay. whatever light rays are coming from here it will be converging it yeah okay now later on we will also study like in some people what happens the lenses as they age the lenses develop some um, uh, some issues in them so sometimes yes, what will happen the converging power of the lens reduces or it might increase in some uh, cases so what will happen if the converging power were to be what happens increases then the convergence will occur before this retina so yes, image is forming here huh but image will not be yes, formed sir. here because the retina is far away from this spot here yeah sometimes what will happen <laughs> now some <clears throat> sometimes the rays will be converging behind this retina for example here yeah yes sir so in that case also the person won't be able to see the image properly that's why people are using specs or lenses yes sir that's what ha basically happens now we have discussed cornea pupil and iris any confusion in the three structures no sir all right now there's one more structure that is ciliary muscles here so ciliary muscles are nothing but they are actually holding the lens there are two pairs yes, of ciliary muscles and that's their only purpose is to hold down the lenses here all right yeah okay <clears throat> now this was actually the first chamber of your eye okay yeah. up to, from uh, from the cornea to this lens that is the first chamber of the eye behind yes, the lens starts the second chamber of the eye that is called as vitreous humor or vitreous chamber yeah getting it now okay yes, so our eye is divided into how many chambers two chambers first is aqueous humor and the second is vitreous humor or vitreous chamber now let's talk about retina we talked about uh, iris lens we talked about this one also <clears throat> then you have got the chambers there are two chambers in the eye aqueous humor 
and vitreous humor. Okay, before that, yeah, lens we have talked about. Now let's talk about the retina. Okay, now retina is actually a layer that is located behind the lens at the very back of our eyes. Yeah. Yeah. So here you can see this is retina, and it, it's a like uh, 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 there's a, a long layer of retina here. Hmm? Now whatever lies lights are entering our eyes, the eye lenses will focus the light that enters into the eye over where over. Over the retina, right? Now the reason why this retina is able to form image and sense it, it's not as simple as like you say the formation of image in a plane mirror. A plane mirror is a dead object. Now it has got no uh, uh, sensation. Yes, sir. That's a dead object. While in the case of um, retina, it's a alive thing. Now. Yes, sir. So this retina has got nerve cells. They sir. are. Nerve cells, different types of nerve cells are present inside the retina. Getting it now, and all of them are performing different tasks. And in this retina, you will also find there are some sensory, <coughs> sensory cells. Yes, sir. Sensory cells. Okay, remember I told you guys about the photoreceptors in the brain. Yes, okay, sir. and here you have got sensory cells. That also detect that can basically detect the light. Mm. Yeah. So these type of cells, the nerve cells and sensory cells present inside the nerve, um, they will be transforming transforming the information that the retina has got into an electrical impulse. Look here, what is happening? How interesting the phenomena here is. Suppose the formation of image has taken place here. Okay, so yeah. this image has not yet been formed here. Only the convergence of rays has taken place at this spot, Arham and Arhan. Yes, sir. All right. Now, what will happen? The nerve cells and sensory cells will convert this information into electrical impulses. Hmm? Yeah. Electrical impulses are generated. Remember? The neural signals. Neural signals. Very good. So, neural signals, now it will be sent to your brain via the optic nerve. Optic nerve. Getting it now? Yes, sir. It will be sent to the brain via the optic nerve. Hmm? Yes, sir. Okay. Now let's talk a little bit about the types of cells that I was referring to in the retina. Hmm? Yeah. One more thing. Look at that. Different types of cells present inside the wall of the retina. Okay. That's a more better diagram here. You can see this is a zoomed uh, view of the retina. Yes, so it has got different cells, but uh, cells they are cone cells and rod cells. These are actually the photoreceptors. Okay. Yeah. So here have a look at them. Cone cells, this here, and this here you are seeing this gray cells. Mm -hmm. These are actually the rod cells. Cone cells has been represented by three colors. What are they? Green, red, blue green red or blue okay and then you have got rod cells if you were to see the rod cells does they not look like chop sticks huh? yes, sir. they do look like chop sticks now yeah. okay now here also you can see these are the primary colors green red blue yeah you guys know about what are the primary colors yes sir yeah blue red and green are the primary colors that's why it has been represented here. So what can you see from the color of the two cells? Like the rod cells. Hmm? Like whenever yes. you are in darkness now, whenever you are in darkness, and usually our vision is blurred. It's low in, our, in, in darkness. But still, we are able to sense few few things. Okay, although the visibility is not very clear, but we can look at our surroundings if the light is dim. Okay, yeah. so these cells, that is the rod cells here, will be getting activated during darkness or during dim light. Yes, okay, sir. and they will be responsible for providing you, for helping you with vision in night times yeah. or in dim light. Okay, now these uh, cone cells are very, very 
um, uh, <laughs> responsive to the colorful lights hmm? and yeah. the bright lights. Okay, so the bright light that enters our eyes, whether it be at night or whether it be at daytime, okay, these cone cells will be reacting reacting to the bright lights. Okay, and therefore, therefore that's the reason why you can see the colorful objects. Yeah, so so and uh, in the retina there are only three uh, cones. No, there are not only three cones. Like it's just one of the portion now. Like okay. see here. They have just taken one or slight portion of it. There are so many. Okay. 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 So, there are uh, so many. And yeah. here it's just a representation now. It's just a representation here. Yes, sir. So, but uh, if we compare it, the rod cells are more than the cone cells. Rod cells are more than cone cells. Exactly. Okay. 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 So, these, this is about the two types of cells present inside the retina. All right. Yes, sir. Now, basically, we have covered all the parts uh, <laughs> of the human eye. Two <laughs> things I would like to put some more light here. Uh, one is this vitreous chamber, which you are seeing here. Yes, sir. Uh, like this, this the liquid that is present in here, that is, uh, that, uh, <coughs> that is actually a jelly-like uh, jelly -like liquid. Okay. And it does not have got any color. It's like water. Okay. Yeah. So we can say that it's a transparent uh, gel-like substance. Okay. Yes, now the reason why you need to have a gel-like substance in this, can you guys explain the reason behind that? Um, no. Like suppose if this was empty, if this chamber was empty, hmm? yes, sir. and if someone were to punch someone in the head or nearby the eyes, what will happen? The cells will rupture now. Yes, if this sir. was empty, if this there was no gel, yes, yes sir, Han. Sir. So this uh, jelly-like substance present in the vitreous chamber, it is actually responsible for maintaining a maintaining the right amount of pressure in the eye, okay, yes, sir. and protecting it also in a way, right? Yeah. Okay, and also it will help to uh, maintain the shape of this eyeball, that is a spherical shape, right? Okay, that is the thing. Just imagine like you have got um, a ball, okay, and it is being filled with uh, with tight air. Air has been compressed into it. That's why if the air is compressed into it, that's why the ball is able to maintain its shape. If yeah. it was empty, if there is no air in it, it will be easily getting compressed. So yes. that is the function of the jelly-like substance present inside it. Okay. Yes. Arhan, are you there or not? Ahmed has not joined today. No. Yes, sir, I'm there. Okay. Now, there's one more thing that is blind spot. Now, what is this blind spot now? Hmm? Sir, yes. In the eye, uh, when we normally see, and we can't see some spots, uh, even if, if the, it is in the vision. Even if it isn't? Yes. Look. Let's perform an activity and then you will be um, able to understand what I'm talking about. Okay. Look here. Uh, let's say <coughs> uh, I have, let's say you guys now have got a piece of paper here. Hmm? Yes, sir. This is a piece of paper. And here I am drawing a uh, cross and a circle here. Okay. Yes. Now, try to do one thing. Do what? Close your right eye. Uh, first, hold this card at uh, hold this card here at your yes. eye level, about an arm's length away. Okay. Actually, you guys cannot do this activity um, in the class. Actually, uh, my computer is not working today. That's why I was not able to join from the um, computer. So otherwise, I would have shown it. Hmm? So can I tell? Yeah, you can explain it. Sir, uh, uh, the blind spot, uh, since there are no light sensitive cells, uh, mm. so that uh, blind spot it, uh, is there so that the retina cannot see it. Mm. Good. Good. <clears throat> okay. Look here. <laughs> it is basically one of the part of the retina 
where you don't get the visual information hmm. yes. where the optic nerve leaves the eye actually okay so this spot where the uh, optic nerve leaves the eye there you will be observing blind spot or if at the spot there are no sensory cells okay then there you will be getting a blind spot because if the light rays were to converge at that particular spot there are no sensory cells to sense the information to catch the information no yes sir so at that spot there will be no uh, no image developed okay so here in this activity let's try to find you uh, your and my blind spot hmm? So yes. we have marked dot. Let's say we have marked dot here and a cross here. So what you will need to do, hold this card at your eye level. Let's say about your arm's length. Okay, arm's length. Keep the distance between us. Now make sure that the cross is on the right. Here I have drawn it on the right side. Okay. Yes, sir. And this is on the left side. Now close your right eye and look directly at the cross with your left eye. If you are attending class from the uh, uh, laptop or from your phone, keep your phone at your arm's length and try to look it. Close your right eye and look directly at the cross with your left eye. Yes, sir. You will be noticing that you can see the dot. You can yeah. also see the dot here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now focus on the cross, but be aware of the dot, because as you slowly bring the card towards your face or your phone towards your face. The dot will disappear. Is that happening? Yes, sir. Focus on the cross, but be aware of the dot also, and slowly bring the card towards your face. The dot will disappear and then reappear as you bring the card towards your face. The dot will disappear and then reappear. Yes, sir. Yes, okay. it worked. It worked, no? Now yes. try moving the card closer and farther to pinpoint exactly where this happens. Where that phenomena happen? Try to pinpoint it exactly. Now, now close your left eye, okay, and look yeah. directly at the dot with your right eye now. Close your left eye and look directly at the dot with your right eye. This time, what did you observe? So I guess they totally more. disappeared for a few nanoseconds. Exactly, the cross will disappear, and and will it does it reappears if you slowly start to bring down the uh, uh, card or this on uh, your phone towards your face. Yeah. Hmm? Yes. Yes. Yes, sir. Right now. <coughs> so what's going on here, guys? Hmm? So it's the blind spot. You can't see. That is the blind spot here, right now. Hmm. Yeah. Look what happens. This optic nerve here. Optic nerve not is not just one nerve. There are it's a bundle of many nerve fibers. Like, uh, uh, can I explain in a better way? Look here. Suppose, guys, now um, let's take this portion out. I have taken this portion out. Okay. Yes, sir. This portion out here. Now they are let's say so many. Um, Nerves. These are so many nerves, right? Yes, sir. And all of them are attaching here. And this is your optic nerve here. Now notice one thing. There's a spot here. There's a spot here where the nerves are not connected together, or where there's uh, there's an absence of nerves here. Right. Yes, sir. So it is due to the absence of the optic nerves here and the sensory cells here. Why, if the rays were to converge in here, you won't be getting the information of the image that is formed there. Hmm? Yeah. Yes. Yes, sir. So this optic nerve is uh, like a bundle of nerve fibers that carries messages from your eye to your brain, hmm. yes, and it passes through one spot. On the light sensitive lining or retina, the light sensitive right lining that is retina. I'm talking about. Yes, sir. Okay, it passes through one of the spot of this retina. Okay, of your eye. Now, in this spot, you see your eye's retina has what actually no light receptors. Yes, sir. Okay, so this spot here, this spot here, uh, 
look here here i am pointing this will also yeah. be this is also part of the retina no ye retina se bahar to nahi hai okay but since the optic nerve is passing through this hence there are no sensory cells here neither you have got the cone cells neither you have got the rod cells okay that's why this uh, is the portion where no image is formed okay hope that uh, hope you guys got it <coughs> hmm. so this spot won't be supporting any type of vision no just like you have got persistence of hearing for 1 10th of a second any sound remains in our ear in the same manner you have got persistence of image on the retina also like any image that you saw okay or that you were seeing that will basically remain in your retina for 1/6 of 1/16th of a second yes sir it remains for 1/16th of a second so therefore like if someone is trying to move uh, uh, move 16 still images per second of a moving object hmm? yes for example <coughs> if i were to try to move 16 images 1 2 3 4 let's say they are no 16 images here and if i try to move the 16 images in one second all of them in one second if i were to try to move it across your eye in one second only hmm. so what does it mean here 16 images of this moving object a uh, moving object what does it shows here acha before that does it not will it not be looking like a animation like a movie animation yes sir yeah exactly this is how the animations were made back then in the 90s okay and yes. 80s or 70s so they were actually moving still pictures so the old cartoons that uh, uh, that you might you guys might have watched uh, like the um, people used to watch the old cartoons so they like today softwares were not being used to make the cartoons right so back then people used to make still um, uh, move still images Okay, for example, this. Sir, we uh, call like, that stop motion. The stop motion, yeah. I, by the way, I don't know what that stop motion. Stop motion, did you say it? Stop oh. motion. Stop motion. Okay, okay. I heard it something else. So here, like, if this person was to run here, for example, like this, the person is about to run. So different images will be run in one second, like this. and suppose if it starts to fall okay the it falls here yeah yes, so so all those images will be run in one second so that you will see that the person was running and then the person fell down yeah yeah right now so this is how animation and movies were you know, being made back then in the 70s and 80s so these are the collection of separate pictures which are moved in a sequence like fashion okay so but the movement is very fast like you have to you have got to move 16 or 20 or more than uh, more than that pic that amount of frames in one second that's why we are not able to spot uh, the particular frame here yes, all right so when we say persistence of image on the retina and if we were to understand it like this it means that in one second in one second 16 images are being passed Okay. Yes, sir. All right then. Okay, there are few a uh, few more things left in the chapter, like the vision of the human eye. It decreases with the age. Okay. Uh, before we uh, uh, discuss about the deformities develop in the eyes with age, as I told you, I will be asking about the function of the parts of the eye. Arhan, yeah. you tell me, what is the function of cornea? the cornea is a glue like substance uh, present outside uh, the iris which i didn't say it, it's a glue like substance no it's not a glue like substance it's simply a transparent covering which is present on the outer side of the eyes no <laughs> yeah hmm. and it protects us uh, uh, and it protects the first part of the eye from 
uh, substances and you see the tears that comes from the tear glands it floats over it it covers the cornea and protects the eye yes sir okay all right so first function you say that it is a covering over the eye okay tears cover the cornea and hence protecting the eye okay yes uh, uh, next uh, arham what are the function of iris so uh, iris is a muscle which is present uh, under uh, under the cornea and mm -hmm. there are two muscles um and it does uh, present uh, in pairs yes sir hmm. and uh, um, it allows a specific amount of um, light to go and converge that means it controls light yes sir light entrance amount of light that will enter then uh, arhan you tell me two more points regarding iris um sir a uh, sir iris is a uh, of a diff uh, are of different colors and the pupil mm. of are of different colors right no iris iris <laughs> Iris is of different color. Pupil is just a small opening present inside the iris. So iris has got pigments color pigments. Iris. Good, and that can can be green, brown. Okay, what else colors? Gray, blue, blue, blue yeah. gray. Right now, um, yes. how can we forget black. the black? black okay apart from that it has got a small opening also that we call as pupil pupil okay pupil is nothing but just a opening by which the light enters the eyes the yes. next in line uh, is lens okay yes, arhan what does lens so lens is the uh, first part of the eye which uh, inter, uh, which allows the uh, Light. No, no. How can we say that it's the first part of the light? Hmm? Yes, sir. It's not the first part of the light. I, For I, first I part of the eye. It's mm -hmm. present in the first part of the eye. Hmm. Oh, it's sorry. present in the first chamber. It's part of the first chamber. Okay. Yeah. And it is behind. Just it is just behind the pupil. If you were to say here in the image, it is just behind the. Pupil. Okay, and it helps to interpret what? the image. Not and interpret. Light. It helps to convert the light. Light. Yeah. Hmm. Converse the light on the retina. Ha! Huh. It converts the light on the retina. That is the function. Getting it now? Okay. And you see, here, the uh, the ciliary muscles and the lens they are connected together by the suspensory ligaments. Does the name not itself says that this ligament can stretch and constrict? Yes, sir. Hmm. Yeah. So, like the lens, no, it can change its focusing power. Yes, sir. Like, हमारे पास जो magnifying normal glass होती है, okay. If it is of good power, it means it will having a high focusing power. Yeah. Yes, sir. So, but it cannot change its focus focusing power. लाइट को ये कितनी दूरी पर ये फोकस करेगा इट कैन नॉट फोकस इट इट कैन नॉट इट कैन नॉट डू इट ऑन इट्स ओन बट दिस लेंस सिंस वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द लिविंग ऑर्गेनिज्म हियर पार्ट ऑफ अ लिविंग ऑर्गेनिज्म इट कैन चेंज इट्स फोकसिंग पावर यस ऑल राइट नाउ दैट इज अ इंटरेस्टिंग थिंग अबाउट द लेंस एंड हाउ इट विल डू या जस्ट अ मोमेंट हाउ इट विल डू Why the help of the suspensory ligaments? So the suspensory yeah. ligaments helps it to change its shape. Yes, okay. Sir. Now more the more curve the lens is, more will be the power bending power, power of the rays. Power, power of the rays. Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. Arham. Sir, I doubt that. We know that a pupil is an opening for the light to go through the lens. So, mm -hmm. if you use uh, advanced microscopes or anything. 
can mm-hmm. we see uh, our inside of the eye uh, from the pupil can we see the inside of the pupil yes sir people uh, like if you were to see it now like this uh, what will you be seeing hmm? if you were to see you will be seeing just tissue and just cells of aqueous humor this region behind uh, between the lens and the and the cornea it, it is just filled with aqueous humor okay yeah. so you will be seeing only the cells of the aqueous humor because this pupil is is not in itself it's not a structure it's just a small opening yes sir right now so yes you can see that uh, by using a, a high microscope high power mi- microscope can we use to see that okay in fact you can see inside the cell also not just the part okay yeah. all right then so that's it guys for today we will be covering the chapter in the next class then almost the- we have done the chapter Yeah. So which chapter do we uh, begin with next? Next is uh, after light solar system.